Welcome to this series on the hydrosphere. In this series, we investigate one of our most valuable resources, water. Looking at the Earth from space, you can see the blue water of the oceans which nearly covers the planet. Standing out of the water is the green-brown land of the continents. And there, if you look more closely, you can even see the layer of gas that is wrapped around the globe. It is these amazing systems of water, air and rock that combine to support life as we know it. Nelly will introduce us to the cycles in the biosphere. In these lessons, we will find out about the natural chemistry happening on Earth that is very important for life on this planet of ours. This chemistry happens as part of a cycle, and these cycles are part of huge global systems. A system is something that is made up of individual parts that interact and work together. This interaction means that the system as a whole can perform an important function, doing more than any of its individual parts could do. Just like, say, our nervous system does. So, what is the focus of today's lesson? Well, firstly we need to see an overall picture of what global systems are and classify the areas of the Earth where they take place. We will then focus on the importance of the system that cycles water on Earth and then look at the problem of water's scarcity on Earth. You will then be able to start understanding for yourself why systems are so important. What is a global system? Well, it's a collection of cycles and chemical reactions that happen on Earth at the same time and influence one another so that life can occur here. In this series, we concentrate on the hydrosphere. But remember that the water cycle is only one of many different cycles on Earth. Let's hear from Nelly again. Other global systems include the carbon cycle, mineral cycling in rocks and rivers, and energy cycles such as food chains or webs. These are called global systems because they affect our planet or globe as a whole. We're now in the approach phase, everything looking good. Contact light. Tranquility base here. The eagle has landed. The life on Earth is very special. Scientists have spent billions of dollars looking for life on other planets, but so far they have not found any other evidence of life in our solar system. On Earth, we call the place where you find life the biosphere. This term comes from two words, bio, which means life, and sphere, which means around space, like a globe or ball. So, the biosphere is the life space of the planet. The biosphere forms a ring around the Earth. It starts at the bottom of the deepest sea trench, 11 kilometers below the surface of the water, and it reaches up to the skies, about 6 kilometers above the surface of the land. The biosphere exists when three different parts of the Earth exist together to support life. First, there's the lithosphere, which refers to the land, from huge continents to tiny islands. Litho is the Greek word for rocky, so lithosphere means rocky space. Then there is the atmosphere. This is the layer of gas that is wrapped around the Earth. The atmosphere supplies us with oxygen for breathing and protects the Earth from harmful radiation. The word atmos refers to air, so atmosphere means airspace. The third important region is the hydrosphere. Hydro is Greek for water, so the hydrosphere is the water space. The lithosphere, atmosphere and hydrosphere are linked together by different global systems. It is these processes that make life here on Earth possible. For example, without the oxygen in the atmosphere, animals would not be able to breathe. Without soil, plants would not be able to grow and photosynthesize and give off the oxygen. Now, in this lesson, we are going to find out about the role of water. Can you imagine a world without water? Without water, plants would not be able to absorb nutrients or photosynthesize, and animals would not be able to function. In fact, about 70% of our bodies consist of water. 
Water ensures that major systems function in our bodies. The circulatory system depends on water. Blood is a watery solution that carries nutrients and gases throughout the body. The nervous system functions because a solution of ions dissolved in water can conduct electrical impulses around the body. The digestive system depends on water to break down food and assist the absorption of nutrients. Even the body's temperature is regulated by water. When we get hot, we perspire, leaving water on the skin. The sweat evaporates and cools us down. So, water is essential for life. You may think that there is enough water on Earth for all organisms to use, but is this true? Well, let's imagine that all the water on Earth can be represented by these hundred glasses of water. Right, we'll start by looking at the place where there is the most water. Now, water is stored in many different places and in different containers. A special name for a water storage system is reservoir. Now, which place do you think we can find the Earth's biggest water reservoir? Hmm, think about looking back at the Earth from outer space. Yes, the oceans are the Earth's biggest water reservoir. In fact, the oceans hold 97% of the entire world's water. That means 97 of these glasses need to go into the ocean. Well, we've only just started looking and already we found most of the Earth's water. There should be plenty of water in the oceans for organisms to drink. Unfortunately, the oceans are filled with salt water, not fresh water. Humans can't drink salt water and neither can animals. You can't even water plants with salt water. The only thing that can live in salt water is sea life, like fish, sharks, whales, coral and plankton. Not to say that oceans aren't useful. Oceans are a very important part of the hydrosphere. They form the largest water reservoir on the planet. Because of this, water currents in all the oceans and seas in the world help regulate the Earth's temperature. But we'll get to that in another lesson. Let's get back to our current problem. We already know that 97% of the Earth's water is being stored in the ocean. Let's take a closer look at the remaining 3% to see if we can find any suitable drinking water. Now, after the oceans, what do you think is the next biggest water reservoir on the planet? Think about it. Where else would you find lots of water? Well, here's a clue. The colder you get, the closer you are. Did you get it? The second largest reservoir of water on this planet is frozen as ice. Most of this ice can be found near the North and South Poles. Here, the temperature is so low that huge volumes of water have frozen to form thick sheets of ice. These ice sheets are called the polar ice caps. Parts of these sheets are in fact frozen seawater. The ice is pure water molecules. The saltiness remains in the cold seas. Because the Arctic and the Antarctic are at opposite ends of the Earth, we call them the polar regions. Some of the ice in the polar regions has been frozen for millions of years. That's some pretty old water. The polar regions of the Earth contain about 2% of the Earth's water, but this water is frozen solid and very hard to reach. We'll have to keep looking for another good source of drinking water. Let's go back to our containers again. We have already taken out all the salt water we have found in the oceans. Now we must take out two glasses of frozen water that we found in the polar ice caps. That only leaves one glass of the Earth's water behind. Not very much, and we still haven't found any water that we can actually drink. 
Can you think where we might find the third largest water reservoir on Earth? Here's a clue. To find this reservoir of water, you need to dig to get it out. Yes, the third largest water collection is found underground. It is called groundwater and it accounts for 0.6% of the entire planet's water. Now, because groundwater is stored underground, we have to get it to the surface first before we can use it. To do this, you have to sink a borehole down into the ground. Deep underground, you may find a collection of groundwater. Once you have sunk the borehole, you have to slide a pipe down the borehole like a giant straw. When the pipe is in place, you can start pumping the groundwater up the pipe until it reaches the surface. An electric pump or a windmill is usually used to transport the groundwater out of the ground. Groundwater can be used for both drinking and farming, but things aren't always as easy as they look. Groundwater can lie very deep below the ground, and the rock above the groundwater may be too tough to drill through. If this is the case, the cost of sinking a borehole may be very high. Even if all these problems can be sorted out, there is no guarantee that we can use groundwater for drinking and farming. Groundwater contains lots of minerals that have been leached out of the rock. These minerals could make the water unsuitable for human use. So, although there is plenty of water right under our feet, we need to keep looking for another source of drinking water. So, let's take the groundwater out of the glass. We are now left with less than half a glass of water. Things are getting pretty scary and we still haven't found any suitable drinking water. What do you think is the next largest reservoir of water on the planet? Well, your clue is up in the sky. Could you guess? It's in the atmosphere. Do you remember that the atmosphere is a layer of gas that surrounds the Earth? Well, the atmosphere is also a storage system that holds 0.3% of our water. This water is stored in the form of clouds and it comes down to Earth as refreshing rain or frozen as hail and snow. The problem with this reservoir of water is that we can't reach into the clouds to fill our buckets and we can't just make it rain every time we need some water. This is a very important source of water, but it's not useful to us up in the atmosphere. So we need to remove atmospheric water from our glass and find another source of fresh water. Right. Now let's see where we stand. There's water in the oceans, in the polar ice caps, under the ground and in the atmosphere. But we still haven't found water that we humans can use without too much difficulty. Luckily, there is one last source of water in our hydrosphere. And it is the most important source for all of us. This is fresh water, the water found in our rivers, lakes and in our dams. This water does not contain a high concentration of salt, so we can drink it. It can also be used by our animals and our plants. Without fresh water, life on this planet would not continue in its present form. Out of all the water on Earth, only 0.1% is fresh water. That's a very small supply. We need to take extra special care of this valuable resource, especially in South Africa. Since we don't have many rivers and our rainfall is low, South Africa is a very dry country. Well, I will not take fresh water for granted now that I know what a small percentage of the Earth's water is available for us to use. Great Tens, there is a lot more to learn about the hydrosphere. I hope you will join us next time. You'll also find more information on our website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Until next time.